Hey everybody, welcome into this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Yes, once again, I've got the glasses on, not because I'm trying to act cool. Um, I know better than to try to do that. Uh, but as I mentioned in my last video, which you may or may have not seen, um, I stabbed myself in the eye with a pair of scissors, and it was pretty bad. And it still doesn't look all that great, so they're here kind of more for your protection um, than mine. Although, I probably do need the protection too. Uh, because I did it to myself. So anyway, in this video, we're going to take a look at the amazing uh, and very powerful morph cut transition in Premiere Pro. There's not a lot I can say about it, it, it other than the fact that it is it's a, it's still a little experimental. It's been out for a little over a year, maybe about a year and a half at this point. I'm recording this in November of 2016. Um, it's been out for about a year and a half um, at this point. It's still – there's a lot you can't do with it, but what it does do, it does really, really well. And it's really cool. Let's take a look at it here. So uh, here in uh, Premiere, I've got a few video clips. Now, primarily, this effect is used in like interview style videos. That's where I use it. Um, I'm going to take this one here, talking about high school athletes. I'm going to right click on the clip and just choose new sequence from clip. And here I've got this high school sequence now that has popped out. In fact, I'm just going to click here. I'm gonna, just going to change the name of this to timeline, um, just because I don't want anything mixing me up. You can see there we go. Our sequence is now named timeline. Now here in this uh, video clip. <laughs> And what I'll do is I'll just bring this down a little, a little bit here if I can if I can find and click on the edge. There we go. Reorganize my user interface a little bit. What I'm looking for is just like a break in the uh, in the actual video that I want to get rid of. Maybe a spot where you're saying um or uh or has a little bit too long of a pause, or maybe there's a whole section you just want to cut out. So let's just find something like that and cut it out, and I'll show you what the morph cut does. So I'm just going to use my little plus uh, button here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop right here. See, there's kind of a there's a gully in the sound, so I'm going to chop right there. I'm going to make sure I don't have any tracks selected. I'm going to hit the letter Z. It's going to slice both right there. These are kind of some hot keys that I've programmed in because I like using them. And then just for, for really no reason whatsoever, just for the sake of showing you how this works in this tutorial, I'm actually going to set this to fit so we can see the whole video up there in the preview area. Side note. <laughs> uh, right here. I'm going to make sure no track is selected. I'm going to hit the letter Z again. It's going to zip both of them. I'm going to select the bit in the middle. You can right click and choose, where is it here? Ripple delete. That's what I'm looking for. I'm, I normally use the hotkey, but uh, in case you don't have the hotkey, that's how you do that. And it deletes the clip and just pops the other clip right back into place. So right now what we would have is what's called a jump cut, right? So I can play it here. High school kids may not be able to. Uh, there can be opportunities. And it's just that kind of, you know, drop, jump in uh, video, which is, it, it's noticeable. There's no other way to put it. It is noticeable. Um, and, but the morph cut, what the morph cut's going to allow us to do here, let's take a look at it over here in effects, uh, video transitions. Let's go to dissolves, and there is morph cut. Now I'm going to grab morph cut. I'm actually going to zoom in a little bit more here on my timeline. Uh, I'm going to grab morph cut, and I'm going to drop it right on that transition, and then I'm going to grab the edges of it and move it in uh, quite a bit, something like that. I really only want it to be, you know, I don't know, what is that, 15 frames or so, something like that, maybe close to 20 frames. And if I hover over where the morph cut is, you can see Premiere Pro is telling me, hey, look, I'm analyzing this in the background. Basically, all that means it doesn't have to do with the background of your frame. It's literally analyzing it using the background uh, RAM processing power of Premiere Pro, i.e. you can continue editing your video while me, Premiere, sits here and analyzes this. And then it goes away. You can see that, boom, it goes away. When it goes away, you now have your morph cut. Now, to ensure that the morph cut runs smoothly, see this red line up here? That means that it's not rendered, which means it's probably going to be a little choppy. So the way I like to do this is add an in point right here by hitting the letter I, and then over here, beyond the red, hit the letter O to add an out point. And then what we can do is go sequence and choose to render into out. So it's just going to render that one little chunk. You can see here it's saying, look, rendering, it's 39 frames total that we selected there. And it's going to render it and give it a second, give it a second, boom. And, and once it renders it, we can start somewhere out here and, and just watch. Watch as we play through this and watch how you would never even know there was a transition in video unless you put it there and you knew it was there. So I'm going to hit the space bar to play this. You may not be able to. Uh, there can be opportunities to make sense. It just fades right through. And if it looks like the faded area is a little bit too big, make the morph cut smaller so it's snappier, it's faster. But what it does is is this this morph cut transition actually seeks out a face in your video clip and seeks to make sure that the facial expression from one shot to the next just fades perfectly 
into uh, into where the jump cut would be, so you don't see that sudden jump in movement. Now, there are a couple things about this. Let's take a look at a different kind of clip. So that's cool. We'll do another example of this in, uh, in a second if you're interested. I'm going to just uh, select that, delete it. By the way, if you have an in-out sequence area or, or timeline area selected, the hotkey to uh, get rid of that is Option X. That would be Alt X on the PC. Just gets rid of that, so we're working with a, a full timeline again, or just we don't have to worry about accidentally exporting like a little, you know, stupid one and a half second chunk of our video. Back here in Test Project, I have this video of myself, of all people, doing a little behind the scenes video a few years ago, and I'm just going to zoom in. I really don't care where I cut this. I'm going to zoom in here. I'm just going to hit uh, Z, and then I'm going to move through... <laughs> and I'm going to cut it again like right here, right? So I'm cutting out this whole chunk, right click, ripple, delete. Now obviously, I'm not paying attention to the sound. I don't care what I'm saying, I don't care how that sounds. It's all just an example for the morph cut, right? So when I play this, just watch how drastic the jump cut's gonna be. Right, my arm moves up, it's out of place, all that. So let's see what, what morph cut can do here. So we're gonna drag morph cut into place, we're gonna drop it in there, and I'm, again, I'm gonna make it a bit smaller. Uh, because I just I want it to be fast, fast, fast. We're gonna sit here and watch it, uh, and and it's gonna analyze in the background. Uh, in fact, while it's analyzing the background, let's just set our in and out points because once more we are going to go ahead and render this. Now there's a little bit more analyzing that it's doing because there's more movement. It's finding my face in the scene. All these things that it's doing. See, it's done. Great. We can go sequence. We can go render in to out. It's gonna render these 21 frames, and I want you to watch what happens here. All right. So let's play it and just watch. You see that whole like weird thing that just appeared between my hands? Watch, watch again. Right? You see that? That's really, really bad. This is part of the downfall of Morph Cut. So I actually made a list over here of a few of the things that I generally keep in mind when I'm using Morph Cut. Uh, number one, you really want a single person talking to a camera that is locked down on a tripod. Uh, we, you know, and, and, and preferably if you can, like whatever part of the body is showing, you really don't want arms and hands moving. Cause as you just saw, when you have that kind of movement, you have, you have literal morphing, which doesn't look good because the whole idea of the morph cut is I don't want to see the cut. I want, I want to be able to go through an interview and cut out every time there's a pause or an um or an uh or things like that. And just boom, it's like seamless. Like it never happened. Like I just read off of a script and just perfectly enunciated and perfectly spoke the first time through. That obviously isn't going to happen if you have moving hands and things. So a single person talking with minimal moving body parts, right? So no hands in the shot, no big movement, like jumping side to side, things like that. That's going to screw you up big time. Um, you also, uh, one person. When you have two people, it's very, very hit or miss because then it's try uh, a, a premiere is looking for two faces and trying to morph two bodies or two faces. And sometimes it detects one and not the other, and it's a, it can be a total mess. Very, very inconsistent results. Um, and if you're working on a project and some of your transitions are one way and then some are the other way, it's really going to it's gonna kind of make your project look pretty bad. So it works with one person on camera. Again, lock your camera down on a tripod. You don't want your camera moving because that's introducing some of what else you want to avoid, and that's movement in the background. So like this shot here of me, if there was cars and things moving in the background, it would look really bad because cars would like appear and disappear and morph all over the place as I'm jumping scene to scene, or, or not scene to scene, but cut to cut. Looks really, really bad. This background, very still, very simple. I would re really never notice any movement back there. Um, so it really works for this. So you want a single person, preferably with little to no moving body parts, except for like their head and their face, things like that. Uh, you want your... your camera to be locked down on a tripod, no moving camera, like a vlogger holding up a camera, right, and walking around where they're moving, the camera's moving, and the background around them is moving, the worst of the worst of the worst to use Morph Cut, although maybe, like, the most useful for somebody like that, because you can cut to all the different bits and pieces that you're saying when you're standing there with your camera, and it would fade together, but it doesn't really work that way. So you really want a still background, camera locked down on tripod, uh, one single person in your frame, and like an interview style where it's like, you know, bottom of the rib cage, top of the head, and they're talking, and hands aren't coming all through the camera. So there are some limitations to Morph Cut. I'm assuming Adobe is going to make it better and better and better and better. But right now, the stuff where it is you just have like chest up and, and all these moving body parts aren't there, it's really pretty remarkable what the Morph Cut can do in Premiere. And that's really all that's required. I mean, it's there for you. It's in the effects panel. Highly, highly recommend you go check it out. 
and play with it yourself. Remember to stretch and constrain it and make sure that the analyzing is finished before you go and render your in-out point if you're rendering. Um, and then just take it and play with it. Export the video. Check it out. You're really, really going to love it. So for the Morph Cut in Premiere Pro and what appears to be pretty crazy futuristic te uh, technology, even though it's been out for about a year and a half, still has a long, long way to go. And jump cuts and in-out points and rendering and all the other stuff we talked about in this tutorial. That's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodsonToughVid.com. I'll catch you in the next one.